Hey everybody, it's Kelly. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Therapist. I went to see the Barbie movie because of course I did. I, like many of you, have had a complicated relationship with Barbie over the years, but the movie was so intriguing. I think everyone needs to see this movie. I also think not everyone's gonna get this movie. One of the things about this movie is it really does highlight the intention behind Barbie versus the reality. That part was super important to me, so I actually did some research on the history of Barbie and stuff. Here's just some super interesting facts that you might want to know. Barbie was born March 9th, 1959. She was inspired by paper dolls, but modeled after a risque adult toy, which is not shocking to anybody, probably. But her famous and controversial figure was intentional. The creator of Barbie saw all of these children playing with baby dolls. The interesting thing here is before child psychology was really all that big of a deal, this is very deep into child psychology. When you have a child and they're playing with a toy, they are role playing with that toy. They use the toy to play out themes that they see in their own lives. So when you see a kid who's playing with a toy, they're both playing out things they experience and they're trying on other roles or other things in order to see how they'd react to it. The problem with kids playing with baby dolls is it either makes them the caregiver, the adult, or it makes them the baby. The play is informed purpose-wise by what you're playing with and how you perceive what you're playing with. The idea evolves, let's have a doll that you can try clothes on and play with in different ways that is not just caretaking mother for baby. Over the years, Barbie has 250 careers, has over 1 million outfits, and in 2015, got adjustable ankles so she could wear flats or heels. A quote from the creator of Barbie says, I want a doll to teach young girls there are no limits to who they want to be when they grow up. So why is a movie based on this doll so divisive? I'm so glad you asked. People seem to either like this movie or hate this movie. People liked it because of nostalgia. Barbie, because of going back to 1959, has a long range of people it can pull in for nostalgia reasons. And I'm watching sets that I loved as a child or sets that I wanted as a child. You see all these things from your childhood that just gives you a minute to check out from the reality that we all feel is very heavy right now and check into a time when things were simpler. And in the movie itself, there they're very clear what they're doing. They're demonstrating child's play, the way the Kens interact, the way that Barbie gets into her car in the morning. These things are demonstrating child play. Also, people love this because it's empowering and it calls out the patriarchy. People also disliked it because it's empowering and it calls out the patriarchy. Also, I hear a lot about the marginalization of Ken, which I will get to because that's pretty significant in its purpose and also in what it says about the people who are upset about it. Let's check in for a minute with stereotypical gender roles, okay? Next week, by the way, I'm going to do an entire video about femininity versus masculinity. That's been a highly requested video, so we will do that next week. But right now, I'm just talking about the stereotypical gender roles or attributes that exist in the gender binary between women and men. You've got women who are emotional, <laughs> therefore men are threatened by emotion. Women can be irrational and and men are hyper-rational. They're not swayed by any emotion except for anger. And when a man feels anger, it's usually easily forgiven and easily understood. In a nutshell, women are said to be polite, accommodating, and nurturing, whereas men are strong, aggressive, and bold. I think it's super interesting, though, things that are sort of diametrically opposed in that. Can we take a minute for this? We've got polite and strong, because in order to be polite, you have to be submissive. If I don't say thank you to someone, I'm being impolite. If I do not approach someone with the assumption that they either know more than me, are more important than me, or deserve more respect than me, I'm not being polite. Light. The history of sir and ma'am is called politeness. It actually is about rank. It actually is about understanding where you stand in the hierarchy and how you interact with those who are above you. So women, when you're trained to be polite, you are trained to be submissive. The idea that polite and strong are opposites means right there that you cannot be perceived as strong and also be perceived as polite. Because strong, you might step on some toes. You might get in some people's faces. In that strength, you might intimidate others. And you can't be intimidating and also be polite. That goes hand in hand with accommodating and aggressive. Aggressive, that's a forward-moving 
act. That's a forward moving attribute. Accommodating is backward moving. If I'm making room for something, if I'm accommodating someone coming into my space, I'm moving back. Think of it like an elevator, a packed elevator and someone's coming on. The person coming on is coming in aggressively because they're moving forward, right? You're in the elevator. So you've got a backpack on, you take your backpack off, you make more space for them. That's accommodating. And then the other two, we've got nurturing and bold, because again, you can't be nurturing if you're also bold, because if you're bold, you're pushing forward, you're pushing buttons, you're taking risks. Nurturing is not risk taking. Nurturing is loving and safe and making sure that everybody has what they need and making sure everyone has what they need. You cannot make sure you have what you need because that is then selfish. It floors me the understanding that people have about these attributes. It's spells out for them what our society is saying about men and women. And there are still people who don't agree, who don't believe it's a thing. Let's talk about in context of the movie, in context of the history of Barbie. She had 250 jobs and still took care of all of her siblings. Now, Barbie never had any kids herself. There were other Barbies who did, but Barbie never had kids. And there is something to be said about the fact that it was Barbie's world and so they were her siblings. But as the older sibling, she was sold as taking care of these kids. So now we've got a Barbie who can do everything, right? She loves her family. She's there for everybody. She also has these amazing jobs and she's able to do it all and look great too. And then those of us who can't, feel like crap. This is where my complicated relationship with Barbie has always come in, and maybe for some of you too. The idea that Barbie is this perfect figure is difficult for people, and and honestly is the first step for a lot of people towards disordered eating, which goes down the road to some fairly negatively impactful behaviors for some people. And they touch on very briefly in the movie the fact that all of Barbie's jobs, all of Barbie's themes over the years, and really all of Barbie's friends' themes over the years, were all still extraordinary. So what does that say for the people who on paper don't look extraordinary? I mean, how many of us, if we reduce ourselves to what we look like on paper or on a resume, which is only your jumps usually, by the way, if you wrote down who you were, it wouldn't look extraordinary to you. And this idea that Barbie is all of these things and so you can be all these things is only half true because if you go back to the quote from the inventor of Barbie, it wasn't there are no limits to who they can be when they grow up. It was there are no limits to who they want to be. That's different. One of the reasons that people hate the Barbie movie so much is number one, because they have no idea what it's actually about. So like, oh, Barbie, pink, wool. And that's, that's fair. Also, people don't like the way Ken was marginalized. And I will tell you that in my experience so far, the people I've either talked to or heard talk at me about why they don't like the movie, it's because when Ken is marginalized, it threatens what they understand about the way the world works. Not any spoilers for the end, but Barbie and Ken go into the real world. Ken goes to the library and learns about the patriarchy and takes the patriarchy back to Barbie land and stuff ensues. There's a super interesting scene in the movie where Barbie and Ken are rollerblading in California. And Ken says, people are looking at me and I feel strong. I feel respected. Basically saying, I feel like I belong here. This is set up for me. And he doesn't know why. He lives in Barbie land. And Barbie's like, I feel like this energy at me is violent. And she's a woman in a leotard rollerblading in California. And every man that walks by is ogling her. They're making comments to her. They're saying all these things to her that make her understand the amount of violence that is implied in showing that much of her body. And it's such a poignant piece for me when it comes to this topic because it encompasses two brand new people to this world and how they are automatically expected to fall into those roles. And it verbalizes in the simplest way possible the difference in the experience between a man and a woman when they are observed by society. The things that a certain sect of our society conservative right-wing people are upset about in this movie is it makes Ken a side character. And they're so offended by Ken being a side character because it never occurs to them that Ken should be a side character. It never occurs to them because a lot of them didn't grow up playing with those things and understanding the different roles and how that works. They don't understand the idea of what women go through all the time. So if, if somebody watches this movie and they walk away offended, I would really challenge them to explore what is that offense at? Because man or woman, you being offended by this movie, you're offended at what they're calling out because what they're calling out is very real for a lot of us. It was visceral, the reaction I had to some of Barbie's experience 
experiences. I can't explain to you what it was like to see that authenticity, that understanding of the female experience played out on screen in a way that did not result eventually in a love story. Because try as they may, so many movies, books, representations of strong women also include them falling in love. Because when you're strong and you're balanced, you also have a peace for love. And I get all of that. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with falling in love. I love love. What I don't love is the idea that that is a necessary piece in order for a story to be valid. Because there are so many people out there, that experience has not been true for them. Or what they thought was love ended up being something that, because people change and things change, became destructive in their life. I have so much more to say about this movie. I am doing short form videos about it over on my TikTok. Go ahead and feel free to check that out. I encourage you to come back next week when we talk about masculine and feminine and how that plays out in our society. And go see the movie if you can, because it's so good. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you all next time. And until then, take care of yourselves and each other.